writer from the late 19th century and the early 20th century. He trained as a GP and he worked in Portsmouth, uh, but he wasn't very successful at it. And whilst he was in practice, he started writing stories. Uh, and he's tried to get a lot of these published and he hit upon an idea for a novel called A Study in Scarlet about a detective called Sherlock Holmes and he got that published in a magazine so that was quite a common thing in the Victorian era to get your work published in magazines because you could get a more guaranteed uh, earning if you have a little piece issued once a week rather than having trying to just sell the whole novel so he got Study in Scarlet out there and it was quite popular more popular than any of the other writing that he'd been doing so he decided to have a crack at another novel and he was paid in advance for it and it was another Sherlock Holmes story which was The Sign of Four uh, and again that was really popular uh, and when he finished that um, it seemed to make sense that he should go into writing short stories because he was publishing them in magazines having one story per magazine rather than a story that spans over four or five magazines just worked better so he began writing shorter single cases involving his characters Sherlock Holmes Dr Watson so he wrote, wrote a whole series of these uh, short stories and they became a bit of a sensation even in, back in Victorian times they were huge people loved them they used to buy the Strand magazine all the time to read these stories uh, and then he took it to America and that was really popular as well he had it published all in America so then he when he finished a certain number of these stories, he had that published as a collected uh, series and he called that The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes because that's what it was. Even though they're all written from the point of view of Watson, it was The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. And again, that was also really popular. Uh, so he got on with another series of short stories, uh, but already he got quite annoyed with the character himself and he was quite disillusioned with it and he felt he had quite a lot more to offer he had lots of other ideas that didn't really fit in the detective sort of fiction category so he took the quite controversial decision to kill Sherlock Holmes off even though he was hugely popular and he was making a lot of money he decided he wanted to do it so he was going to do it so and it was quite a spur of the moment thing the story before the final story he quickly introduced this villain character because he needed a character that could match Holmes so he came up with his character Moriarty and then in the final story, the, called The Final Problem, Moriarty and Holmes face off against each other and they fall to their death. And obviously you've got to remember, back in Victorian times, it wasn't that common to bring characters back from the dead. So people just took that to mean he was dead. It's just he was sparing you the gory details. Uh, so the public were kind of outraged, but also, you know, that's the thing he wanted to do and he did it. So he killed off Sherlock Holmes. It was really shocking. But he didn't really have any kind of regrets and he published all of his uh, other stories or tried to get them published, his Professor Challenger series, his historical romances in particular, uh, Napoleonic stories. He had like lots of different things that he wanted to push. He, had, he worked in politics for a bit, he did tours of America, he spent 10 years refuting any kind of comments about Sherlock Holmes getting mad about it, not wanting to talk about it, focusing instead on his other work. Uh, but then in the early 20th century, so I think it was 1901, 1902, he was approached with uh, an idea that somebody had about a story set on Dartmoor. And he liked the idea, and he thought, he thought that it fitted with Sherlock Holmes. And it had been long enough, and if, because it was such a good idea, he decided he was just going to have another crack at it. So he committed to writing a novel, so this was The Hand of the Baskervilles, and it was absolutely incredible. It was such a great story. It was really, really well received. My personal opinion is The Hound of the Baskervilles is the best Sherlock Holmes story there is. Uh, and so you've got to remember that in Victorian times again, it had been 10 years since the last Sherlock Holmes story. People were absolutely begging for Sherlock Holmes. And then along comes not only uh, a novel, so plenty of Sherlock Holmes to keep you satisfied, but a great novel, a truly fantastic gothic horror. He worked it out as, ha as setting it before Holmes had died, so that was how he justified it to himself and managed to fit it in with the series as a whole. But once he'd finished it, and once he'd got the reaction, and he got sort of back into the character, 
he just decided to go with it and he decided to bring Sherlock Holmes back from the dead in a story called The Empty House so he went straight into another series of short stories and um, obviously these were really well received the magazines started selling lots more and he just committed to it and he ended up writing a further three short story collections and another novel called uh, The Valley of Fear. So the ten year gap in which he didn't write any Sherlock Holmes is known as the Great Hiatus. In the stories it only lasted uh, a year or two years, so there's only about two years between the final problem and the empty house, but in the real world it took him ten years to return to the character, so among Sherlock Holmes fans it's known as the Great Hiatus. So my collection began, I really wanted to buy um, a good set of all the stories. I pretty much wanted everything in one volume. I thought if I'm going to read them I may as well start by having them all in one go. So I hunted around for ages and eventually I picked this up because I thought this looked pretty good. It was old, it said Sherlock Holmes, Conan Doyle, sounds good to me. But then when I got around to having a go at reading it, I started reading the first story in here, which was A Scandal in Bohemia. And then I was thinking, hang on, hang on, what about A Study in Scarlet? Where's that? And I kind of looked through it, tried to find it, and I couldn't find it anywhere. And then I realised, and obviously I looked it up on the internet, that this is Sherlock Holmes' short stories by A. Conan Doyle, and doesn't include the four novels. So that kind of really annoyed me, because then I had to go and try and find the four stories. And because I'm a bit obsessive, I wanted them to be in the same set. So it took me ages to find the matching book, which is this is one, which is uh, Sherlock Holmes' long stories. Um, so I went for this, obviously, uh, and I'm quite pleased with it, actually, now that I got them both. I'm glad that I got them in two different volumes. I think that kind of makes it a bit easier to read. You know, and they look good, so that's cool. But it's something to pay attention to. If you're planning to buy Sherlock Holmes, have a look and double check that if you want to get everything, you've got everything. You've got the four novels and the five short story collections all in one go.